I, I'm not sure if I was on the air all that time. I, I didn't have the uh, thing turned up. But anyways, this is the 23BC show. This is Jacob Hay. And uh, I'm here uh, alone tonight uh, because uh, recently my guitarist and I got into a little fight with one another. And uh, uh, the band was on hiatus for a little while because of that. Uh, but we're going to be getting back together and we're still going to be doing the John F. Kennedy Bardic Elegy and Protest this month uh, at the Coffee House and uh, some other things. Um, but unfortunately, I have some bad news about the uh, show we were supposed to do at the Harley Davidson Museum. We we're supposed to do the Veterans Day celebration show at the Harley Davidson Museum, and unfortunately, that has been canceled uh, for our band anyways uh, they chose a, a different band uh, that had more equipment than us so uh, unfortunate but uh, we will be playing at the coffee house and that show date is let me just pull it up here that's the 49th anniversary commemorative uh, for John F. Kennedy Night of Bardic Elegy and Protest with Jeannie Dean and guests featuring Mud River Lee, composer Mark Mantell, poets Joanne Chang and Peter Blewett, musicians Dave Geistart, and there's me and Uriel of 23BC and, and a special surprise guest, and that's going to be Sunday, November 11th at 7 p.m., at the Coffee House, which is at 631 North 19th Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53233. It's a free will donation with all door money going to the benefit organization, so be generous. And uh, uh, to see information on that show and other shows we'll be doing, just go to our website. It's 23bc.org. Tonight I'll be playing uh, some music by some... Uh, uh, people that I know, including uh, but not limited to uh, Andrew the Red, the Hollands, 1913, and some others, including uh, the punk band I started when I was about 15 called Alienated Youth. I'll be showing you some of that. So stay tuned for that. And uh, next week, hopefully, we'll have some new material recorded by 23BC that I can show you guys. Um, and I will be showing you some 23BC material tonight as well. So, with that, uh, here is a song by the Hollands called Old Man's Town. Wait. Don't be coy, sing my oh. <laughs> Technical difficulties, terribly sorry. Uh, let me just find what that problem was. There we go. Oh, okay, it should work this time. And once again, this is a song by the Hollands, Old Man's Town. The Hollands uh, performed at uh, the event I organized for my nonprofit collective organization to promote uh, ecological awareness. Uh, they're a wonderful uh, Wisconsin group. Uh, and uh, here's, uh, here's one of their newer songs. Sing my woes, sing my joy, sing my friends now, don't be coy. Sing my sad and pretty song, sing, oh, sing, oh, sing along.
Man's Town by the Hollands. You're listening to the 23BC show, and uh, I'm going to be playing some uh, music by some people I know tonight, and uh, I should have brought some poetry, but uh, I, I just wanted to say uh, I got a chance to go to the uh, Zine Fest at the Polish Falcon uh, recently, and uh, there's a wonderful scene there, really a uh, bustling scene with all kinds of people from all over the place with their with their wonderful zines and uh, I uh, didn't have too much money to spend but I spent all of what I had and I got some good stuff and uh, I got to talk to uh, Milo and Chris of the Queer Zine Archiving Project. I used to uh, uh, volunteer with them. I used to be an intern um, when I was in high school and uh, I, uh, I wanted to start a zine library at Bucket Works, and uh, I went over to Bucket Works and I told uh, James Carlson about this zine library idea, and uh, I was expecting he would say, oh, well, we'll consider it, we'll talk about it in our next meeting or something, but instead he just said, okay, let's do it. He brought me into the back and uh, showed me a bookshelf said decorate this bookshelf and we'll turn it into the zine library and I was like oh really okay uh, and I had a copy of a book that Milo and Chris had lent to me uh, the uh, stolen sharpie revolution book and I, I thought it would be a perfect way to decorate it uh, so we were going to Xerox the book and then when I attempted to Xerox it uh, it, it came out all wrong and so uh, James said well why don't we cut the book spine so that we can just you know Xerox the pages freely and I was like I don't know we ended up doing it anyways and I ended up returning uh, uh, a book with no spine or binding at all whatsoever to uh, Milo and Chris so I brought them a new copy of that book uh, when I went to the uh, the zine market the zine fest uh, because I felt kind of bad about that but um here is a song by uh, Andrew the Red, and this one is called The Prettiest Anarchist. Might just take a second. Come on. Huh. Wonder why it's... Okay, let me try this. The inventors of oh. tricks had a falling out. Oh, there's an advertisement. I right, gotta mute that. <coughs> oh dear. Yeah, let me try this. This should work. Okay, there we go. Here's uh, Andrew Red and the Heckling Spectacles, the prettiest anarchist. Most repressed 
rushing sound between heaven and earth and I don't know if you've heard this before maybe for a while but I love your crooked teeth when you smile and I know that we may never have sex again but I want you to know that I'm so fucking happy that you're still my friend that was The Prettiest Anarchist by Andrew, Red, uh, Andrew the Red and the Heckling Spectacles. And uh, I just wanted to say, we had a really nice show last week, and for some reason it didn't turn up on the, uh, on the internet. Um, I think that well, it might have been my fault, but hopefully this week's will, uh, will stay on the, on the web. Anyhow, I'm going to play a song uh, by a friend of mine, Harvey Taylor. And uh, it's uh, featuring uh, Yames Finlayson and Holly Haybig and uh, many other wonderful musicians. And uh, let's just uh, here, here it is. I saw the headlines in the paper Mother Earth is in intensive care She's pictured in bloody bandages With IVs poked in Touch and go Doctors are doing Everything they can It's hard to decide Where to operate first Whether the ocean Or the land Mama's poor love are laboring Too many forests have been whacked And her pulse is getting awfully faint How in the world are we gonna bring her back well, We could start like this Every roof, watch windmills go round and round. Leave coal inside the mountains and let oil stay deep under the ground. Relatives gather at Mama's bedside. Stay with 
Taylor. Now I'm going to bring us back to when I was in middle school and uh, my best friend, uh, his name was Eliah Kerner. He was a great guy. We both liked uh, J.R.R. Tolkien and we, uh, we both had uh, similar uh, intellectual ideas about politics and, and whatnot. And uh, he introduced me to punk rock and uh, forever altered my life. And uh, he and I collaborated on uh, a punk group. And uh, he managed to find uh, a bass player and a drummer at our school uh, for the band. And I had bragged that I knew how to play guitar because I, I figured out how to play uh, uh, Seven Nation Army on the E string, <laughs> but I couldn't really play guitar. And uh, but I thought, what what the hell? I mean, it's a punk band. Uh, I can figure out how to play guitar. I mean, Sid Vicious could figure out how to play bass, sort of. So why can't I figure out how to play guitar? And uh, I assumed by the time we'd actually made the band, I would know how to play guitar by then. Uh, but anyways, he, so he found the, the drummer and the bass player, and uh, they had apparently been trying to start a band since they were kids. And uh, so, so they called it, I didn't come up with the name, but they called it the Calamities. And uh, we had to introduce the uh, bass player and drummer to punk rock pretty much. We had to get them into it. They were more into classic rock and classical music and whatnot. Uh, and at first they didn't like it, but uh, we, we got them to like it through the Sex Pistols and the Ramones and all that. And uh, Dead Kennedys. And so... Uh, well, I ended up being kicked out of the band because they were all classically trained and whatnot, and I had no idea how to play guitar. So, and I volunteered to be the singer, but at that point they had already decided they didn't want a central singer. They wanted to all be involved in singing. So I got kicked out of the band. I helped start, uh, which always perturbed me. And what also perturbed me about them is uh, that they always said that it was the, the whole band was started by the bass player and drummer because they had you know formed a band as children. And I'm not mad about it anymore. I, I just I was mad because I thought that Eliah and I should have gotten more credit because we were the ones who were really into punk rock. We made the image of the band uh, become what it became. But uh, uh, no hard feelings. I was, the other reason I was mad is the guy they replaced me with was the guy who uh, his name is Chris, and uh, he was the guy who, who took my first girlfriend, my Naomi, it, it seemed. Uh, but anyways, that's, that's all old. That's middle school. I wanted to show you how they turned out sounding. They're uh, pretty impressive for uh, the youngsters that they were. Unfortunately, they're, they're no longer around, but I'm going to show you something uh, by a couple of them. A little, a little while later. This one is You Call Me Eccentric by The Calamities.
eccentric. And that's all me. So that's an old one by the Calamities. That was my buddy uh, from middle school, Eliak Kerner, on vocals there. The drummer was uh, Sam Seeger, and uh, his father, uh, John Seeger, is a really great guy. I'm sure you've all heard of him. Um, and I remember uh, uh, hanging out with him in his little basement studio, and uh, and he would show me how to how to use the uh, the recording studio equipment and and I, I don't even remember how to use it but he, but I, I tried to soak whatever I could in that he was showing me and and uh, altogether really great guy and 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 those those kids really great people and uh, the bass player uh, Nate is uh, uh, studying uh, in the medical field right now. I think he wanted to be a surgeon for a while, but now he's uh, doing something with uh, trying to help fight cancer now. And um, and later tonight, I'll be showing you, hopefully, if I have the time, uh, uh, the drummer Sam Seeger's uh, band, The Munition Nets, that he did with the, the guy they replaced me with in the band. And uh, I really like the music they've come out with. Uh, but anyways, I wanted to show you guys uh, my my punk band that I started after them in high school uh, called Alienated Youth. Uh, I had uh, my, with with my first relationship through through her through Jesse. I I met uh, Dom Dom Menace, uh, known around town as Slinky, um, or Dominique Brown, and uh, great guy. Uh, and we collaborated on the band and uh, came out with a lot of material. We have enough material for at least two or three albums, but uh, we've just never had a full band at one given period of time. Or if we did, not all the band members would ever show up for practice at once. Um, but anyways, um, he, was, he was in jail for a little while, and we had already started a MySpace page for the group. And people were bugging us, saying, "Hey, we want to see what you sound like. What we want to hear. Where, where's your material?" And, and I was like, "Well, I don't know what to do." So I had an old uh, recording from the X-ray specs without the vocalist, and I just wrote some lyrics to it and uh, called it "Tree Spawn X-ray Revisited" to give an idea of what my vocals and lyrics would sound like for the band. So here's here's that little, you know, stolen music with my vocals. I was probably about 15 when I recorded this.
good. So yeah, that's uh, Tree Spawn, X-Ray Specs Revisited. And uh, uh, some of the lyrics in that is, in, in God we trust, the tree spawn shouts. In God we trust, incorporated. In death we feed, in life we shit. Uh, and uh, actually that's not very... Uh, that's not a very apt uh, metaphoric utensil there. The um, tree spawn thing, uh, in actuality, paper uh, for dollar bills and uh, money is actually made out of cotton, so it's not necessarily tree spawn. But you get the idea. I was 15, and um, anyhow, uh, well, when Dom got out of jail, you know, we we were writing a lot more songs and. Uh, we were trying out different drummers and guitarists, but we never found that one person for either of those roles. And so we just got fed up with not having any material recorded, and so uh, he tried playing both bass and guitar on the recordings we recorded on my laptop. And uh, I'll show you some of the stuff we came out with of our, rec of our songs. Uh, so no drums uh, and a bass player trying to play guitar so it's not going to sound that great but it'll give you an idea of what we could have sounded like had we eventually had a full band this first one is called alienated youth this one's called alienated youth one two three four <laughs> I've got plenty of material that Dom and I recorded like that. Um, I'm just going to show you two more tonight. Uh, one, uh, this next one uh, is one of Dom's uh, more comedic songs called uh, Danielle is a Slut. <laughs> One's called Daniel's a slut. Daniel is a slut! One, two, three, four. I'm in the city dog. I better go to Daniel. I just wanna go far. Yeah, 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 yeah. Daniel is a slut. Yeah, 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 yeah. Daniel is a slut. Yeah, 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 yeah. Daniel is a slut. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Come that moment on, I can tell she was a slut. Especially when she asked me if I wanna drill. Fuck her in the butt. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah
I'll just show you one more of ours. Uh, this is the Anarchist Anthem, Part 2. version of uh, my old punk band song Anarchist Anthem before we had an actual guitarist or drummer and before I well it's very interesting how uh, I went from singing music like that to stuff like 23 BC <laughs> um, and uh, oh yeah, I wanted to say when I was talking about the zine fest I, I want to do a zine uh, myself about uh, it's kind of an autobiography, and uh, I'm trying to figure out how to go about it. It'd probably be a series of zines, a lot of pictures, a lot of artwork, a lot of interesting stuff. I have a weird, fun, fucked up story, so <laughs> I think it would be good entertainment, and not only that, but could teach people a thing or two or inspire people, and uh, that's what I'm hoping to do by publishing it if I if I do so um, 
so keep an eye out for that. Um, now, I was, uh, I was talking to you about that uh, group I helped start in middle school, the Calamities. Well, the, the uh, drummer, Sam Seeger, uh, ended up banding up with the, the guitarist. They replaced me with Chris Kowal, and uh, they started a group called the Munitionettes, and I was hoping to show you what they sound like. Uh, they've got a very unique sound and they've got a great sense of humor and I love them to death and uh, here's uh, the, their song, The More You Got. <sighs> Nets, uh, the more you got. Uh, I think I found uh, what I was looking for. Uh, uh, the uh, the original original recording of the song 23 BC. This is uh, Uriel uh, and I had both written these things separately. He, in a moment of extreme revelation while he was very, very stoned, just walked out of wherever he was and then wrote this tune. And simultaneously, uh, uh, at a different period of time in a different place, I had a kind of revelatory experience and I streamed out the lyrics to 23 BC. And then one night I said, hey, you've got that cool song. I've got these cool lyrics. Let's see if they work together. And uh, so first I recorded him playing it acoustically, and then I kind of fiddled with it, cut, copied, pasted things in the recording of his uh, song, and then figured out how the lyrics worked with it. And so this is 23 BC parts 1 and 2, if, if, if I'm correct, I could be mistaken, uh, as one song in the original form that we recorded, Recorded. It's not going to sound that great, but it'll give you an idea of how it first came came to be. And I was still trying to figure out how to sing it at this point, so you'll hear me going eh, ooh, and uh, making some silly sounds with my vocal cords. Um, so let's see if I can play this. Um, let's try this. Hopefully this is it. I'm not positive, but uh, and if it is, this should be from uh, sometime early in 2011, I think. And uh, hmm. Well, you know, it's not playing. So why don't I just show you guys? Uh, 
Well, let's see if this is it. No, no, that's our that's our actual final version of 23 BC Part 2. What the hell, I'll play it anyways. Uh, and then maybe next time I can show you that original, original recording. But here's 23 BC Part 2 by 23 BC.
And uh, you can vaguely <laughs> make out me in the background at the end <laughs> saying, Yes! Fuck! That was like having fucking sex! Uh, <laughs> uh, it was something along those lines. And uh, so, yeah, that's our, uh, our, our version uh, that we have so far of uh, 23 BC Part 2, our song that's going to be at the end of our first album. It's funny how. Well, anyways, uh, I'm going to be playing a song by 1913. This one's called Koto. And it was somehow in the, already in the middle of the song, so I'm going to refresh the page. And there you are. was 1913 Koto, and I'm going to sign off with uh, this, our song Freedom. I don't think we'll be able to listen to the whole thing, but I'll play as much of it as I can. Um, and uh, just want to tell you all thank you for uh, tuning in. Turn that, turn that down a little bit. Thank you all for tuning in. And uh, uh, once again, our show at uh, the Harley-Davidson Museum has been cancelled uh, but we are still doing the show at the Coffee House the John F. Kennedy Bardic Elegy and Protest with Gene Dean and this is uh, Jacob Hay of 23 BC signing off peace namaste blessings and uh, have a good night